Hello everyone, Denise here. Today I'm showing you this stitch in the round for Paying It Forward Friday, July 2023. This is the Jet Poncho. It is a sister poncho to the poncho I just released, which is called the Franny Poncho. This also can be worn two different ways. This is with the square neck, and then I will show you what it looks like with the V-neck. This is the V-neck view. This is uh, a square shawl, so there are four increases, just like on the Franny Poncho. This has a different stitch, and I use different yarn to create this. You can use any yarn and any hook that you want. If you want to pick a yarn and then use a much larger hook than it calls for, you'll get a lot lacier of a look. So let's get started on the tutorial. Okay, so this is the yarn that I used for the poncho. This is Karen Blossom Cakes. This is sold at Michael's. I love these things, they're amazing. I do believe I have almost every color. I think there's a blue I don't have, which is funny because blue is my favorite color. But uh, this is, what is this one? <laughs> Gabbana. It's all super uh, like chill tones, some browns in there, uh, reddish browns, just really like, I don't know. When I look at it, it reminds me of the filter Sienna. Um, just that overall type of vibe to it. It is 61% cotton, 39% acrylic. It is eight ounces, 227 grams. This is 481 yards, 440 meters. So it calls for a five mm or H hook. That is what I used. It is a medium weight for. Uh, if you want to use any yarn and then up your hook size uh, a size or two, uh, it will make for a more lacier project and it will actually make your yarn go further. So if you wanted a larger, more lacy poncho and you only have a certain amount of a yarn, um, give that a whirl. That could work. Uh, lacy poncho in the summertime is great. So I created this to have sort of the best of both worlds. It is a cotton yarn, but it's also, it has acrylic in it. So while it's lacy, it still could give you warmth, but it also will breathe when you're wearing it. So I used a 5mm hook or an H hook. And uh, I showed you in the beginning what the poncho looks like, but I will put it in front of me so that you can take a look at it sort of close up. At the beginning, you have sets of stitches that will create opportunities for you to do increases on. You need to have that multiple of stitches here. So your very first round, I'll show you on the tutorial, but your very first round is going to have this set of stitches here. It, I consider it a double V stitch, but you could call it a shell, I suppose. Uh, you need to have that divisible by four. If you're not equally dividing it by four and it landing nice, then you're going to end up with an issue with uh, possibly having the back being a straight back or the front being straight and then a point at the front. So you just got to be aware that when you are creating the beginning, if you are diverting in any way from my 64 stitches for the neck, you might have to do some thinking to get it to land exactly like mine is landing. The point of all of this to tell you about the increases is because you're going to need st stitch markers. I used quite a bit, I'm not gonna lie. I used one on each corner or yeah, one on each increase corner. And then I also use stitch markers to show myself where I'm going to increase. So this is an increase here. What I would do is I would put a stitch marker around the increase because every other round you're going to increase. 
And I wanted to make sure that I didn't forget that. So you can do it a lot of different ways. You obviously will choose the way that works best for you. How I did it was I did a stitch marker at each increase and then I did another stitch marker on each round on the corners where I knew I had to increase. I marked that as well. So let's just get into it. I feel like I'm just talking in circles. So we'll get started. This is what I had left of my cake. Not much. So go me on using all my yarn. So the mannequin that I showed you at the beginning of the video, that is a 33, 34 inch bust. That is how the poncho will fit on that frame. So if you are a larger size, you might want to pick up two cakes and keep going until you reach the size that you enjoy. If you are larger like I am, you will end up, if you use one cake, you'll end up with a shorter poncho, just, just so you know. Examples of stitch markers is what I was going to show you. Uh, these are actually my favorite for the corners of the poncho. The increase, I like to use these to tell myself this is an increase round. If you don't have that type of stitch marker, you could opt for these, which would, you know, go great in the corners to show you. And then you could use these for the increases. So you could use paper clips, spare yarn, hairpins, um, ties to garbage bags, anything you can find. If you can use it, tie it, get it to stay in your work and have it be removable, it can be a stitch marker. So your imagination is the limit on what you can use for stitch markers. You don't have to invest in a bunch of stitch markers. But if you would like to, this kind is in my shop, just saying. <laughs> so let's get started. I am not using them for the tutorial. I don't want to hear a bunch of racket on my table while I'm doing it. So I'm going to use the little ones, these ones I'm going to use. And then I will mark the increase with my increase marker. How about that? I have these in the shop as well. They're actually prettier than that one though. So I used a 5mm crochet hook. Let me double check and make sure this is 5mm. Because I thought it was, but it looks bigger. Yeah. I was like, that looks way too big. It does not fit in the five, so I was wrong. I grabbed the wrong one. I bet this is the five. Yeah, that's the five. So I have a video on this, and I can link that below. It is a hybrid hook. It is a yarnology hook, like... I don't know if I have any in here that aren't plastic. No, I don't think I do. They're all in the living room. The other ones. So this is the hook that you would get from Hobby Lobby. It has a plastic head identical to a clover. Always got to uh, hooks when we start, right? It's, well, I mean, it's not identical, but they did a darn good job of being super close to being a clover. Um, for me, when I work, it's exactly like a clover for me, but, uh, I didn't, I didn't want to always use my clovers because sometimes my clovers don't have enough grip for me. Now this is an eye hook. Eye hooks are okay, but when you get to the smaller sizes of clovers, this is smaller, right? So I liked the bulk of these handles. And so I took a clover hook out, I put it in one of these that was size appropriate to the smaller ones. I think the smallest the Yarnology ones go are 5 mm. I'm pretty sure that's correct. Uh, and I took the sleeve, I took the sleeve and I put it 
on a clover. The smallest one I have, I think the smallest clover I have in one of those handles is a 4.5 and I had to glue it in. So just keep that in mind. If you're gonna do the same thing I did, I'll link that below to show you how I did it. This is my hybrid 5.0 hook. So we are going to start with our blossom cake. Again, if you need a larger size, use two. My book does not want to stay proper for me, but this is from the Dollar Tree and I like it. It just says stuff. I have a half of a glove on. It's a glove I purchased from Timu to help with arthritis and it was too tight on my hand. I needed support for my thumb. Apparently my thumb gets a lot of abuse. So I cut it off and it works great. So whether you want to purchase it from Timu and cut it off, they were like 250 or something. Um, that's on you. It works for me. It might not work for you. They look like this full size. If you're interested, it's inside out. They have grippies on them, which is nice. I like that the fingers out so you can see it. I can put my Timu link below too if you are interested. It's a set that looks like this. Um, they're too small for me, so they don't feel good on my hands, but they sure feel good when I cut them off, so I made use of them. Okay. Starting with our Caron Blossom Cake in the color Cabana, we are going to do the camera down. So hold on, I'm moving y'all. Hope that wasn't nauseating. I'm gonna pull you back because this is awfully close. Going to start with a slip knot. I wrap it around my finger, push through, boop. I do believe I have to lift my camera up. So give me just a moment here. Okay, so what we do to begin is, like I said, multiples of four. I'm going to do 64, one, two, Sixty-four chains. Make sure all your V's are facing you, which is very easy with this yarn because it is a chain style yarn and it does not split. Work all the way to the end, making sure your V's face you and then slip stitch in to, to your first chain. And then we are going to do a round of single crochet. So chain one, single crochet in that same space. And then put one single crochet in each stitch all the way around. You can work in the back bumps if you'd like. Back bumps being if you took your work, turned it slightly, you'll see a bump and then you'd work into that. Be consistent. If you're going to do one in a bump, do all of them in a bump. Otherwise, you're going to end up with issues of twisting your chain, confusing yourself. It's not pretty. So be consistent. Either go into the V or make sure you're going to into all of the bumps on the back correctly. When you get to the end of your round, count your stitches make sure you have 64 just in case you skip 
a chain or skip a bump. It's very easy to do. We're all human, so. And if you do, we can just add one at the end. It's not a big deal. So I'm going to continue with my single crochets. I will be right back to you when I get to the end. When you get to the end of your round, making sure that you are not twisting your chain. Lay it out like this. Make sure it looks consistent going all the way around. If it is twisted, you will notice it looks something like this. Turn it until it's not. Your tail will be facing you. Okay? And then slip stitch into that first single crochet. Now we're going to move on to round two. Round two, we're going to chain three and put a double crochet in that same space. Then we're going to chain three and put two more double crochets in that same space. And we're going to skip three stitches. One, two, three. And we're going to do two double crochet, chain three, two double crochet. All in that same space there. Skip three, one, two, three. Next stitch, two double crochet, chain three, two double crochet. One, two, three, two double crochet, chain three, two double crochet. We're going to do that all the way around and we'll meet up with you at the end of round two. Okay, so I'm getting to the end here. Just want to show you when you get to your end of the round, you will skip three stitches. You will put your two double crochet, chain three, two double crochet in that next stitch. And then you should have three stitches left to skip. One, two, three. Then you're going to slip stitch into the third chain of your beginning chain three. One, two, three. Okay, that is your round two. It's already pretty. So this is what I was speaking about before. Having your work divisible by four. So this is where you can put stitch markers in if you'd like. So I'm going to grab mine. So this first one you're going to increase in. And then you're going to have three that aren't increased. And then this one will be increased in. And you'll have three that aren't. And this one will be increased in. And then three that aren't one two three and then this one will be increased in so those are going to be your increase points for when you have increased rounds you're going to increase at those four stitches right there so the next round is an increase round so you're going to be increasing in these stitches for the stitch markers and that is what I use the other stitch marker for. At the beginning of the round, if you want to indicate that this is your increase round, you can do that. How I was doing it when I was working my round was I, I told myself on all four that I was increasing because 
I have to be reminded of what's going on because I will forget. So, all right. So we are, oh, and then the other thing with that, uh, like I was saying at the beginning of the video, if you have any other stitch count, you could end up with four non-increases and then an increase. So although it needs to be divisible by four, these shells or double V stitches have to be divisible by four as well. So right now you have 16 chain three spaces and that is how we got to divide that by four. If you increase and you do a larger neckline or a smaller neckline, you have to know that when you create this first, first set of these stitches with the chain threes, that that has to be divisible by four, if that makes sense. It has to be divisible by four with no extra stitches in between. See each one of these, I have one, two, three, one, two, three, one, two, three, one, two, three. So it's going to end up completely even as far as the layout. It will be a complete square when I am done so that it can be a V-neck or a square neck. Either way, it's symmetrical. So if that doesn't make sense, message me. I will try to walk you through it. But overall, if you end up with too many of them and it's not equally divided by four, on your second round, you're going to end up with a not completely symmetrical poncho, which is fine, but just know that going into it, okay? Okay, so round three, we are going to slip stitch over to our chain three space here. And you can go in here if you want. I just did this. And then you're gonna chain three and since this is our round three, it's an increase round, we're going to increase. We know that right away, okay? So we're going to do another double crochet here. Then we're gonna chain two, not three. Chain two on this set when we are doing our increase. We're gonna do two more double crochets. Now we're going to chain three and do two more double crochets. Chain two and two more double crochets. Now that is that's what the increase is always going to look like, okay? So then you would move this marker up to the center so that you know where you're going to be putting your stitches. And then this is what I was doing. I was putting the increase marker along these stitches here, along the row of stitches or round of stitches as to remind myself, this is an increase round. Okay, so then the next chain three space and the next one and the next one. So the next three chain three spaces, you will do two double crochet, chain three, two double crochet in each of those. Okay, I have switched stitch markers as to not be so noisy. Um, this is an increase space. So an increase is two double crochet, 
chain two, two double crochet, chain three, two double crochet, chain two, two double crochet. And I'm going to take my more quiet stitch marker <laughs> and put it in the corner there. Then in the next three chain three spaces, we're going to do two double crochet, chain three, two double crochet. We're to the next increase. So we will do two double crochet, chain two, two double crochet, chain three, two double crochet, chain three. Two double crochet. In the next chain three spaces, the next three chain three spaces, do two double crochet, chain three, two double crochet. Next increase space, two double crochet, chain two, two double crochet, chain three, two double crochet, chain two. Two double crochet. In the last three chain three spaces, do two double crochet, chain three, two double crochet. slip stitch to your top of your chain three from the beginning and that is your round three that's an increase round remember I put a stitch marker at the beginning to remind myself it is an increase round I switched that out from the one that says INC because they dangle on the table and that is the only sound in this room other than my ticking clock and it's really loud so now we're going to move on to round four, and that is a non-increase round. 
and every non-increase round we will just be working in the stitches we have already created. So that means no increase and we just go all the way around, same, same exact stitch in every single space that we're going to work into. So each chain two and chain three space, we are going to put two double crochet, chain three, two double crochet. So we are going to slip stitch over to our first chain two space right here. You got to pay attention to that. Otherwise you're going to end up all messed up. So we don't work in between double crochets like this. We only work in chain spaces like this. Okay. So slip stitch over to your first chain two space there. Chain three. Put a double crochet in that same space. Chain three. And then put two more double crochets in that same space. Now I'm going to leave this purple marker that indicates my increase round because that way next time around, not this round, but the next time around, I will know back here I increased and right here I didn't, so the next one I'll need to increase. So I leave it there as a reminder. For this stitch in the corner, we're going to do the same exact thing, just like every other stitch. We're going to do two double crochet, chain three, two double crochet. That's it. They're just rubber stitch markers that I split so I could use them. Because my other clovers, I don't know where they are. I have one and uh, that's not going to work. Next chain two space right here. See that? Don't forget it, okay? Two double crochet. Chain three. Two double crochet. Next chain three space, two double crochet, chain three, two double crochet. Next chain three space, Two double crochet, chain three, two double crochet. We're doing that all the way around in every chain spaces we have, whether it's chain two or chain three. We are doing two double crochet, chain three, two double crochet in each of them. Okay, that is the end of round four. Um, so the repeat now is going to be three. You're going to increase four, you're not. So every other, yes, every other, no. You will know that if you put a stitch marker in the increase rounds. So this round coming up is an increase of round three. So if you look at your work and the stitch marker is here and not here, you know that when you come up to here, you have to increase. That's what I did. That's how I kept track of it. I actually did it on every single corner because I forgot from corner to corner if I was increasing, which is not hard for me to do because I get distracted by a lot of things. So this one would be the increase round. You would slip over to your chain three space right here. And then as you got to your corner, I will review the increase for you again, just so you can remember. So I slip stitch into the top of the chain three and then slip stitch over to the chain three space and then chain three and then do a double crochet, chain three, double crochet.
Now, you will be over to the corner now, and you will need to do an increase. And an increase is double crochet, double crochet, chain two, double crochet, double crochet, chain three, double crochet, double crochet, chain two, double crochet, double crochet. And you would put your stitch marker back in the corner here so that you know that's a corner. And then, like what I said, the stitch marker doesn't work so well for it because it's rubber, but it's also silent, so it works for that. Is to mark your stitch or stitches, and I'll show you with the increase marker because it's way easier because it's metal. And if I was working on my lap, it wouldn't matter because it wouldn't make noise. But I just stuck the whole thing in there like that. And I did it to each corner that I increased at so that I would never forget I had to increase that round. And it worked out really well, actually. Uh, I never got off track. It always kept me on track. So I highly recommend it. So four stitch markers would work. And then a fifth to let you know your increase round. I would recommend eight and mark your increase round every single corner. That's just me. The center here looks small, probably. Look, my hand's in it. It looks small, but with my um, size head, I have a 22 inch head, I think. I mean, no one's measured it. I've measured it myself. So I think it's 22. Uh, an average female in America, her head is typically 21 inches and three fourths, which means it's a smidgen away from 22. So typically this is going to fit anybody unless you know they have a larger than probably 24 inch head because this has tons of stretch to it. Let me show you. So if you're going to put this on a head, check this out. That's a lot. That is a lot of stretch. I will measure it as I stretch it so that you have an idea of not to be afraid of the chain 64 if you're using worsted weight yarn. So it's stretching to 12 and a half inches, and that's with both of my hands being occupied. So it's not stretching as much as it possibly could. So you would take 12 and a half plus 12 and a half, and you would have 25 inches. This is literally going to fit anybody. And then if you want it to fit a smaller human, and you don't want to divert from that 64 chains at the beginning, and you feel like this is too loose of a neck for say a three-year-old, go ahead, once you're done with your entire poncho, come back in and do another row of single crochet or half double crochet or double crochet, whatever you need to, to bring in the neck just a little bit. And if you don't want it to pile up and be a turtleneck, decrease or do two stitches together or skip the middle stitch here and then you won't get that extra bulk. So you would go single crochet all the way along and then maybe skip the corner stitch and then keep going. And that way you won't get, you won't get a turtleneck that way. So that's all there is to the poncho. So every odd round that you do, increase. Every even round you do, do not increase. Just work into your existing stitches. 
This is a fantastic project. I highly enjoyed making this. I love the way the stitch looks. It is gorgeous. I'm probably going to design more in it, just so you know. Uh, I, I really enjoy stitches that give interest and are not difficult because it looks like a lot of work and it's really not. The poncho is timeless, beautiful. I'll probably do a shawl tutorial. Um, I just love it. I love it, love it, love it. So I'll bring this back in here and show you. It is so beautiful and I want to do a blanket of the stitch because it's just so nice, so elegant, so beautiful. So that is the Jet Poncho. That is the stitch in the round for Paying It Forward Friday, July 2023. I hope you enjoyed this tutorial. I enjoy each and every one of you and appreciate you. And until next time, guys, you take care. Bye.